Hello. Keep it going for John Doerr, everybody. John Doerr. I don't get along with my teenage cousin at all. I think he's a bad person and a piece of shit, and I hope he doesn't get into college. <laughs> he always talks trash about my comedy. Hey, Hannibal, we were watching you stand up on Yeltsin. <laughs> it wasn't funny, man. So I have to figure out what can I say back to this 17-year-old boy that'll destroy him, because I'm not letting this slide. I'm petty as hell. And I figured it out. I just accused him of masturbating because teenagers can't handle that. Their psyches are weak. So I say, what, man? You coming from jagging off or something? No, with the jagging off, animal! Why would you say that? I do not jag off. I will never jag off. Get out of here, Hannibal! <laughs> Why you want me to get out of here so you can jag off someone? No! That doesn't work on me, I'm 28. You say, Hannibal, were you jacking off? Yes. <laughs> yes, I was jacking off. I was jacking off so I can have sex for longer later. <laughs> that is grown up shit. I'm planning out my life. <laughs> Sometimes when I watch porn, I put my hoodie on so I feel creepier. <laughs> It's more fun that we all run around a little bit. Ah, ah, you need a masturbation hoodie. Everybody needs one. <laughs> Especially in summertime, the AC is blowing. You got to keep your top warm because your bottom is exposed. <laughs> Life is all about balance. <laughs> yeah, jagging off joke took a philosophical turn. Whenever I eat out at restaurants, I never put the napkin in my lap. I never put the napkin in my lap. And people say, Hannibal, why don't you put the napkin in your lap? Because I believe in myself. <laughs> I believe in my ability to not spill food in my pants because I'm a goddamn adult and I've mastered the art of getting food from my plate to my mouth without soiling my jeans. You need to believe in yourself, too, and get your shit together. That's for babies. <laughs> I get into arguments with, with taxi drivers all the time. And I get into arguments, and I get, in, get out the cab, and I slam the door. But that's not the way to win an argument with a taxi driver. The way to win is you get out the cab, and you leave the door open. <laughs> then he has to get out, come around, and close the door. While he's doing that, I'm on the other side, opening the other doors. <laughs> and we just keep going around and around and around. And I got my own Benny Hill situation going on. I won. Life is great. <laughs> Whenever people going through struggles in life, they get really cliche. They say stuff like, I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm just taking it one day at a time. You know who else is? Everybody, because that's how time works. <laughs> that's the only way you can take time. What were you doing in a week at a time before? Who are you and who taught you how to do that? Why don't you teach me how to do that? I want to get through this shit quicker, too. <laughs> People always say shit like, I'm going to pray for you. You going to pray for me? So you going to sit in your apartment and do nothing? <laughs> That's what your prayers are. You sitting around and not taking action as I struggle with the situation. Don't pray for me. Make me a sandwich or something. Because I'm really upset. And I can't cook for myself. Well, we'll keep you in our thoughts. Or with the other bullshit in your head. No, keep me out of your thoughts. Because if you talk about what you think about. That sounds like horrible company. So please keep me and my family out of your thoughts unless you're thinking about making us sandwiches. <laughs> I used to live with my girl. Sometimes she would walk around our place mad. I wouldn't know why she was mad. She was just walking around upset. And I don't play those games, so I would just trip her. 
I don't know what you were mad about before, but I definitely know you're mad about that tripping that just happened. <laughs> and maybe you'll open up about the other situation while you're putting ice on your knee. <laughs> I meet crazy women. I met this one girl at a bar, it's four in the morning. We have some drinks, go back to her place. We get there, she says, all right, don't try to hook up with me. I don't try to hook up. You just brought me, a stranger, back to your place at four in the morning. What's your motivation? Because you couldn't possibly think I want to talk with you this long. <laughs> and she said, I would like to hook up, but I recently had an abortion. And I said, well, do you want to have another one? I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that, but you know what? Fuck her for telling me about that. What did I do to deserve that information as a stranger? Where's your boundaries? You telling me this an hour into knowing you? I got good buddies that don't even know how many brothers and sisters I have. <laughs> and you telling me this so quickly when you could just say that you had your period and I would have left. <laughs> I was like, whatever, girl. Just take that shit one day at a time. <laughs> and I pray for you and keep you in my thoughts. <laughs> good night, y'all. Thanks a lot. So you and Matt broke up. That's hard. That's tough. Sweetie, what do you want to say to Matt tonight? <laughs> we'll play that for you. That's Penny Lover by Lionel Richie. Alexander Graham Bell was the first person to sarcastically say, Hello, I invented the phone. Hello. <laughs>